In this video, I'm going to go over how to use Lychee Slicer to support your islands, as well as I'm going to cover maybe some of the misinformation I see on the internet about what islands you should or should not support. But first, we need to talk about what is an island, especially when we're talking about resin 3D printing. Well, an island is any part of the model that is not attached to the overall structure. It's also any part of the model that is not attached to the build plate. So this could be basically the entire model if you're not printing on the build plate. And in resin 3D printing, you probably shouldn't print directly on the build plate for most things. So in that situation, most everything is going to be an island. But it can be rather hard to explain this, so instead, let me show it to you. So I've got this Venom that's created by Cardioso 3D. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. If not, uh, feel free to destroy me in the comments. This particular model is unsupported, which is why I picked it. In the Lychee library, we try to make sure that everything is supported, but there's a lot of stuff in there and we can't always do it. This particular one is unsupported, which is why I'm grabbing it. So I've already loaded it into the scene here. And what I wanna do is show you what an island is instead of just trying to explain it. For that, I'm gonna to go to prepare. And over here on the right-hand side, we've got the layer, the, the layer preview. And what I've done is I've moved it to the top and I've clicked on this bottom. If I click on top, uh, it'll say up or bottom. I'll show you what that does. And this is kind of a cool tool to looking at islands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it down. You'll see there's this little blue box um, here on the screen. Anything that is above the blue box is essentially clipped off. Anything below it is what we're gonna see. So if I click on the bottom here on this box, you know if you notice this box right here, if I click on the bottom and I click O on my keyboard, I'm gonna switch my view over to orthographic, which I personally find a little easier for doing this kind of stuff. Now, if I move this down, what we're gonna see is you're gonna to start to see where these islands are. And of course the islands are anything that's, um, well, an island floating in free space. And you can see as I get to the very bottom of this uh, object right here, I've got a couple islands, but really the major island is this one right here. This is the very first island of this entire model. And maybe a way to do it is just to add supports as these things pop up. So I can come over here and I can click on this one. Uh, you can see there's one right here. It showed up just for a second. I can also use the up and down arrow keyboard on my keyboard to go between a layer at a time. You'll also notice I've got this weird texture right here. This is because I've got layer thickness preview on. I can turn that on or turn that off. That's gonna give me an idea of how thick that layer is. If you don't know, this layer thickness preview is directly tied to your resin settings. So if I click on export and go over and look at the resin I'm using, this particular one is set to 50 UM or 0 0.05 millimeters. If I change that, let's say to 0 0.03 millimeters, click okay, and I go back over to prepare, and let's turn back on that layer thickness preview, you're gonna see they're much thinner than they were. And that's because these each one of these lines right here is 0 0.03 millimeters instead of 0 0.05. So back to this, I can just keep clicking up and up and up and as islands pop up, I can come here and I can add a support. Now this was kind of maybe I would say the old way of doing it and there's probably some professionals out there who do this for a living and this might still be a preferred method because it really you know guarantees and makes sure, make sure that they get the islands uh, supported the way they wanna do it. But for all of us uh, casuals out there, or for myself included, I like to do it a little bit quicker way than that. And I do that, let me delete these ones right here, using the island detector. Now the island detector um, is found under prepare, support, and island over here on the right. If you click on that, what you're gonna see is under island detector, there's a couple, there's a search selected, and under accuracy, there's a couple options here. There's fast, normal, detailed and real. Fast is only going to show the biggest islands that you can find. These are going to be generally the very bottom of the base, really large islands, things you're gonna to wanna to use a heavy support on. If you move over to normal, this is going to be a little bit more detailed. It's gonna find a little bit more of the smaller ones and you're still gonna find the big ones as well. So every time I go up with this one, I'm still finding the previous ones. So with normal, you're gonna find the really big islands and medium sized. If I go to detailed, I'm gonna find big, medium, and smaller islands. If I go over to real, I'm gonna start finding islands that are basically like the texture of the model. Uh, for a model like this one, I might find like 400 or more islands for it. I don't really recommend using real unless you are like truly a professional and truly OCD. There's also maybe some issues with um, trying to be that OCD, and I'll talk about that later. Some of the misinformation and rumors we have about islands, but more on that later. For now, I'm gonna use detailed. It's my favorite. I think it's the best bang for the buck where we get the most. So let's click on this object, uh, but also very important. Uh, before you run an island search, if the object is large enough and you want to hollow it, and this one is rather large and I do want to hollow it, make sure you hollow it first. So I'm gonna go over to hollowing, hollowing 3D or hollowing 2D. Um, 2D hollowing, you can't do an island search on it, but um, 3D you can. Um, so that's what we're gonna use here. I'm gonna put my layer thickness maybe 1.8 and two, that's what I like to use personally. 
I'm going to hollow this model out. Now when I run a um, island detector, it's actually going to search both the inside right here and the outside instead of just the outside. So make sure you do that first. Okay, I've got detailed the island, the object is selected. Now let's click search selected. It's going to go through and run an island detection. Now, how long this takes is completely dependent upon the complexity of the object and the speed of your PC. It has to do a lot of calculations. So if you've got uh, a lot of objects on your scene um, and they're very complex and your computer isn't the fastest, I would recommend only doing it on one object at a time. It can take a while, but it's better than trying to get the system to do all of the objects, potentially using up all the RAM on your computer and crashing the system, something we definitely don't want to do. All right, that ion detection is done. Now here's something really, really cool we can do now that we took the time to run a detailed island search. It took a little bit longer to run, but we get something from it. Because I said that um, the detailed island search really kind of includes, you know, the fast, normal, um, and then above and beyond. What we can use here is the new thing called area filtering. This is great. And I'm going to show you a workflow on how to do this, where it's pretty much all you need to do. And to do that, first let's look and see, I've got 224 islands detected right now, which is a lot of islands for a shape like this. And if you look at the back, we can see some of these islands are actually pretty small and some are pretty big, but which ones are big, which ones are small? Which ones need a large support tip and which one needs a small support tip? Well, with filtering, we can do that. So first thing I'm gonna do is say, only show me islands that are, let's say, two millimeters squared in size. And there's only one, there's only one island that that's, bit, that's that size. We can click on show and we'd see here, it looks a little interesting. What's up with that? Well, if I click on this here, I can see that island's actually on the inside of the model. This right here is the biggest island in this entire thing. So I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but there's this little white thing under the red. It can be a little hard to see sometimes. So if I want to get rid of that, I can go over to the trash can here and just click on delete all islands. It'll go away and now I can see the white. Now that white is giving me an idea of the size of that island. It's a little bit bigger than the actual size of the island just to, I think, make it a little bit more visually easier for you to see, you the, the user. And I make sure I turn on the layer thickness preview and I zoom in you can actually see the actual island right here. This, this whole shape right here, it's a little bit funky looking, but this shape is the actual size of the very first layer. So if I place a support anywhere on this first uh, bump right here, that's gonna be the first island. And as I go down from there, you can see this ring will expand along with my support to, to kind of give you an idea of where you're at on the model as far as which island you're gonna be supporting. And because it's the inside, I'm going to use this interior pillar, which is, uh, it, all that is, is a regular support tip where the tip diameter is the same as the diameter of the support. So it looks like this. This is just so it doesn't break off and it's really strong. It's inside the model. It doesn't really matter. All right. So let's change this down now to one millimeter squared. And we see we've got two of them. We click on this little thing here uh, on the search island, this little arrow here. And now we're looking at the second one. That's right here. So this is the, apparently according to this guy, the next largest island on this. I'm going to go over to heavy and I'm going to place a heavy just right there. You can see that island uh, preview here is going. And if I can want to, I can hit space and I can move these around if you're using the Lychee. If you have access to Lychee library, you get Lychee Plus or if Lychee Plus, you can use these advanced features right here, like hitting space and be able to drag these support tips exactly where you want them. Uh, now there's one more in here. Let's check where that guy's out right over here. That's also on the inside. Oh, and there we go. This right here is one of the most important islands you never want to miss. And this is why it's really important to run an island detection after you 3D hollowed. This is the island on the bottom of the key. And the, by the key, I mean to the key to the neck. If we didn't support this island, what would happen is this key right here would just collapse. And you wouldn't be able to put the uh, head on the object because it would the neck would just would be all the way filled up with resin. You'd have to drill it or something. So to make sure that we do that properly, we come in here and we add in a nice big thick interior pillar here, probably a couple of them. And that's gonna take care of that island. This keyhole, uh, this key right here is going to properly print because it's gonna be properly supported on the inside. All right, we're gonna go down again. And I'm just gonna start cutting in half now. I, I did 0.1, now I'm gonna do 0.5. And I'm just gonna go through and find all the islands for that one. Here, I'm gonna go down to a heavy again. Um, I'm probably gonna move down to smaller heavy after I get a little bit um, smaller on the size of these islands. And I can just go over here and I can just start clicking, 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 just to make sure that I've got all these islands nice and supported. I can also use the arrow over here to kind of highlight them. And they'll the ones that are highlighted will be uh, highlighted in a white or the other ones will be red. But with this particular view, I can see quite a few of them. So it's easy just to click, go in there. Let's see out next, we've got, oh, that looks like another interior one. 
right there. We'll move that to interior pillar. And the last one, last one's definitely on the outside. Let's go over to my heavy again and grab that. All right, and we're just gonna cut it down by 0.5 again, or by half, so let's do, well, let's do just 0.2. And you can kind of see the workflow here. I'm just gonna work my way down to the smaller and smaller islands. This one shows 12. Um, on that one, I'll use this maybe a medium heavy. And I'm gonna keep going down and down and down and just supporting them. All right, so now what I've done is I basically just kept going down until I hit 0.03, which is the layer thickness of where I'm printing this is at 0.03. Now, one thing I do like to do is I'll go a little bit thinner, let's say 0.02, make sure I have no um, islands that are thinner than my uh, layer thickness. That's over here if I look here and I set my layer thickness to 0 0.03, which is thinner than I think a lot of people print. Most people are printing at 0 0.05. But I like to go just a little bit thinner and then stop. Um, I don't, there is really no reason to support any islands that are much thinner than your layer thickness. Uh, and that's because the, the layers that continue are gonna pick up those islands. So if you don't support them, it's not gonna damage your fat. It's not going to get stuck uh, in the printer. You're not gonna have to do a vat clean afterwards. And that's because the layers that come after are going to pick them up. At worst, what you're gonna have is maybe one layer that's that where that island is flattened out by one layer, which you will never ever notice. In fact, in most cases, by putting a support on a very small island, you will cause much more damage and much more ugliness to your uh, part than just leaving them alone in the first place. And this is one of those rumors or misinformation that I see on social media all the time. I see users take a model and they'll throw it into uh, like UV tools or something where it will find islands that are microscopic and it will fix them by creating a bunch of connective um, resin. By doing that, you're really, you could be causing a lot more damage than you need or worse, you're just uh, spending a lot of extra time and effort to fix something that really doesn't need to be fixed in the first place. Now this right here, this is just the island supported. This isn't a supported model. If I tried to print this, it would fail. You still have to go through and grab the overhangs, but that's a separate video from this one. We've got a couple of videos on the Lychee Slicer channel. Uh, I think Pimp My Supports is one that people have really enjoyed a lot. So if you would, if you wanna learn how to do a full support job, go watch. First, I would start with the how to orientate your model. Uh, and then for hollowing your model, I'd go check on how to hollow your model and then head over to maybe like the Pimp My Supports or how to use grid support videos on how to do the rest. Of course, this one on how to actually use the island support tools. Now, just for a quick demonstration, I took the head and I orientated it in a way where I don't think that I would ever 3D print it. I would never 3D print it this way because as we can see here by the teeth, there's a lot of islands on this model and you really wanna to try to avoid islands. So from here, I can see there's 85 islands. But let's say if I turn this into a different orientation and then I ran another island search with it, let's see how many islands I get on that one. Because one of the objectives of good model orientation is to eliminate overhangs and islands. So if I run the island detector here, what I can see is I'm down to 16 islands. That is quite a difference in showing you that this is probably the proper way to orientate this model. Now this isn't a foolproof method. And of course there is a little bit of time involved with a rotating model and running an island search. But like I said, especially if you're new to using Lightyear Slicer and new to this, this might be a good workflow that helps you visually see which way is best to orientate your model to avoid, to avoid having to support tons and tons of islands. And we can see here the difference. These islands, even though they're quite large, there's very few of them and they're gonna be really easy to support. I can just come in here, grab, let's say a heavy, click, and if I hold down shift, I can quickly grab that entire area right here. If you don't know what I'm doing, if I go over to um, manual, and I see U shift key is on and the interval is two millimeters. What that means is any support that I select, hold down shift, it's gonna put another support two millimeters away. If I make this, let's say one point, uh, set that as 0.5, click here, they're all gonna be 0.5 millimeters away, which is a little too close for something like this one. But just a quick way, I can then come in here and kind of do the same thing. Uh, let's point this to 1.8 and then I can just hold shift and I can just kind of go through and put kind of like a star shape out here really, really quick and support these islands relatively fast. And now we have, you know, most of the islands are supported. You still wanna do a little bit more with this with this model and this rotation, but as you can see, most of these teeth, if not all of these teeth, are actually gonna print completely by themselves without needing any support at all, where the other way where it was turned around, every single tooth would need a lot of support. So just kind of a quick little hack on maybe a better way to, or a, a fun way to use island detection to help you maybe better understand model orientation. 
And I think that about covers it. So I hope you learned something new about the island detection tool or the area filtering tool found in Lighty Slicer. Or if anything, hopefully I helped identify maybe some of the workflows that you're using, or maybe you're over supporting islands or maybe using a third party tool to uh, do some unnecessary steps and maybe saved you some time. And with that, if you could, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us out a lot. And if you have any questions, comment below or on our Discord channel. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.